All right, this is Steve Terry, and I'm with uh, Steve Wilson, Dr. Steve Wilson, a naturopath here in Grand Junction, Colorado. Um, we're here today to talk about ATP. Um, ATP is a um, uh, acronym for adenosine triphosphate, and uh, Dr. Wilson and I are both uh, uh, spiritual men. I'm a Christian, and he is a um, Messianic Jew. And um, so we are going to talk a little bit uh, about our faith um, within uh, the confines of, uh, of nutrition and some of the guidelines that God gave us in the book uh, we call the Bible and, uh, and, and following those guidelines to be healthy. Um, God created us in his image and if anyone knows how to be healthy, it would be him and some of the statutes and precepts and laws in the Bible. Uh, guide us in how to be healthier. So, Dr. Wilson, uh, say hello to Google Hangouts, our very first one, hopefully a very, very many. Um, Dr. Wilson has done a lot of research, very wise man, and our goal is to just uh, share that wisdom through a, um, uh, you know, through really a prism of the word, uh, because we both believe that um, nutrition and the word go together to create a better man. Hmm. Well, what, what an introduction, Steve, and thank you very much. Uh, it, it, in dealing with nutrition and dealing with what we put in into our bodies, we should discuss that not only is it what we eat, it should be in the perimeter of what we look at, what we listen to. All of these things have an effect on our overall physical well-being. And, and I, I was raised very simply in a evangelical fundamentalist viewpoint with an overture of understanding uh, the Hebrew ways based on Torah speaking. Now, the Torah is an unusual word and that most of us refer to it as a legalistic uh, approach when in fact it's not. It's a book of instructions and it, it doesn't say that this is if you do this uh, it is a way to salvation. Actually it's a way to live a life that's based in freedom. Uh, and it's within that perimeter that a disciplined person probably lives more freely than an undisciplined person. And uh, I chose to break away from those disciplines um, in my 20s, I suppose it was, and then return in my 50s. So there's a 30 year journey. It, you know, because I think a lot of us uh, men, especially, will. Uh, leave what we know is good for us in our 20s and hopefully come back by the time we're 50. <laughs> well, the intent of this is to show the positive of not doing that and that the freedoms that we give up to maybe acquire some what we think is, is fun is very, very costly. And some people walk away from it uh, in, in a very hurt way, not only emotionally but physically. And, and I was fortunate of coming of returning. Now you use the words freedom and discipline in that um, uh, narrative there, Steve. And, and I think the words discipline, I mean, words to me are very, very important. And uh, the pictures we paint in our minds based on the words we hear. Um, and, and, and okay, I'll just say the word fear because words can create fear. Um, uh, you know, the word discipline can create fear in some lives. Uh, you know, the word joy. Uh, um, happiness, freedom, those things are, are, are positive and, and make us move towards something. But the word fear and, and maybe the word discipline will make us walk away from something. Um, how does discipline, uh, through your knowledge and wisdom, uh, create freedom? Those two things just seem to be in, in conflict? Uh, conflict with each other. Well, let, let me take you to the book of Proverbs, first chapter, and it talks about uh, that the, the, the Yeshua Messiah, may I use that, says, I want you to become a disciplined person. Um, intelligently disciplined is the way he really puts it. And, and then you go to the next verse and, and talking about the reasons why. First, to be right. And in the United States anymore, to be right is, is not right. <laughs> and then it wants us to be just, and then it wants us to be fair. So if we based our lifestyle on being intelligently disciplined so that we could be right, 
it would make a very, very interesting discussion when we get to, well, are, are the instructions and the precepts spelled out in the word elf, elf, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, to understand that if we live by the precepts that we were designed, and under this incredible thing called the covenant, where I, I like to live, because the covenant is a relationship with the promises that my Yeshua gave me. He said, if I will live in a principled life, and, and he gives us directions, then these are the benefits that we will have. And it also lays out that if we choose not to do that, then these are the issues that we deal with. And they're not in freedom. And one of the words that jumped out at me, reading in the book of Deuteronomy, it says, uh, it used the word inflammation, that, that we will deal in a world physically that's in, that, that, that sur we're surrounded with inf inflammation. Well, in science, as we now well know today, where there is inflammation, there's always disease. Yeah. Now, those I poor mean, folks, you know. I mean, there's some inflammation is, is uh, <clears throat> the crux of so many uh, maladies, disease, things like that that we have uh, in this day and age that we're dealing with. And, you know, I think of all the, the ibuprofen and, and, <laughs> uh, and naproxen and, you know, uh, Tylenol that's on the shelf and people take daily just to reduce inflammation, to reduce pain. And, and the, and the trade-off with that is we now know that there are in excess of 20,000 deaths per year using ibuprofen. So we granted we lost the pain to keep up our bad habits, but perhaps we ought to look at the, at the habits and the promises that we were given that we, if we will live within the instructions of diet, maybe we wouldn't have to deal with those decisions. Those are the, the things that, that brought me to the realization that to live in, in harmony with how I was designed, then perhaps there would be freedom. And since I'd, I had really reduced myself into a mess, <laughs> I felt like maybe maybe living in the principles that I had been raising wouldn't be all bad. Now we're going to get to what ATP means and and, and share a slide. Um, we at the last minute we had a technical glitch and I had this slide on my computer, but I'm sure Dr. Wilson has the slide to show and share on his computer as well. Um, so the um, uh, we're talking about right now discipline and and the word covenant. Um, you know, I think of, because you've used the word promise several times, um, the covenant as a promise between two people. Um, how would you describe the covenant that you're referring to out of Deuteronomy? Well, it's God's promise. And he made that promise, and he will not break his. We have the choice of not falling in compliance. But he says, if you will do this, I will do this. And then he goes on to say, if you choose not to do this, these are the things that's going to take place. And each and every one of them talks about bondage. And, and I think, I think, Steve, from my perspective, when, when, when I look at my life, it's like, here's a stake, here's a chain, and the length of my chain is how far from this one little given can I, can I get? And uh, if, if, if a person is dealing with cardiovascular issues, Okay. His chain is about this long. Can you raise your hand so everybody on His there chain is about this there long. There you go. Okay. okay. If you're a diabetic, your chain is about this long. You can't get away from medications. On the other side, if you're overweight, and, and here's kind of an unusual statistic. For if we get past the and in, into the obesity, every pound of fat that we carry increases the amount of veins by seven miles. So as you increase in weight, you increase seven miles of veins to pass blood through that fat. That's a big number. Well, it makes your heart work harder. Well, so, I understand. Uh, I'll have to share the research on that one. But yeah, the heart, obviously, the more, you know, um, miles that our blood has to travel through, the harder our heart has to work. And I know we have a lot in there. Um, let's, let's speak to, um, let's get on 
really target with what ATP is, okay. what it means, and um, you know the energy. Uh, uh, you know, uh, let's 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 talk just for a second. The word nefesh, um, which is which is used in the Bible and, and or it is in Hebrew, means uh, uh, life is in the blood. I'm the passion of the body. The passion of the body. Yeah. And, and, and it's with that, you know, uh, from my viewpoint, the blood is the most important thing that we have in that it moves nutrients to the cell and it takes, takes waste away from the cell and delivers it to the liver for cleansing. So this blood that we have in our body circulates three and a half times a minute, delivering and eliminating. So it becomes very, 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 very important to you and I to understand the importance of blood. Now, in the world of ATP, there it, it's made principally in the mitochondria of the cell. And the mitochondria is considered the engine of the cell. So all at once we think, oh, well, we every, every cell has an engine. Well, in fact, every cell has a thousand mitochondria. Except in the heart cell, which has upwards to 5,000 mitochondria per cell. Well, what is a mitochondria? It's the, I know it's, it's, it's the, the engine, engine of, the, of the cell. It's, it's the little mechanism that creates the Krebs cycle, and off we go into the science of that. And in that process, that metabolic process, we spit out in energy in the cell. So in that activity, let me just describe this to you overall. The, the mitochondria consists of this organism that makes, makes the energy uh, and it's done through a breakdown of ATP to ADP. And in that little bond right there is where the energy is given off. So we have to recycle and reconstruct that ADP or adenosine diphosphate back to its original shape. Sorry about that. We had a dropped uh, communication there. So in, so in the process, ADP. the ADP is adenosine diphosphate. The adenosine ATP is adenosine triphosphate. So we've got to rebuild that adenosine diphosphate molecule so it can recycle. Well, this turn, this turnover is what's called in science an energy turnover. Happens in excess of a million times a second in per each cell per mitochondria. Per mitochondria per cell. Per cell. So if there's 5,000 mitochondria in my heart cell, mm -hmm. that's a big number. It's a huge number. Okay. Per second. And, and, and just so we can keep this down at a, at a level that, that the general uh, po population, someone that doesn't have the DR in front of their name like you do, Mr. Wilson, Dr. Wilson. Um, uh, so you're describing kind of a, a chemical reaction or a, a fission, fusion reaction. In, in the cell, maybe a nuclear reaction would be a better term, where they're splitting off a, uh, um, a part of the a particle, and the energy is created from that breaking off of an element. So I think of that as a nuclear um, explosion. explosion, and that's what creates energy. So we're taking nutrients and we're taking um, uh, things from the outside of our cell, putting them in the cell, creating a nuclear explosion. That's what gives us energy, and then um, we, we talked about waste, and well, I'm sure we'll get to, we need to remove all the crap from the cell, then we can do it again. Create more energy, boom, 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 move the stuff out, create energy, move the stuff out. Is that what we're describing? That's what we're TP to ADP uh, in really basic layman terms? Well, another way it would be to discuss an engine. Okay, that's a good one. Everybody's got an engine in their car, and they understand that it takes oxygen plus fuel and you get in a spark plug and you get a burn. Okay. That's all we're talking about here. Except in the cell, it's not only a burn consisting of an electrical burn, 
but a chemical burn. And this goes on seven days a week, 24 hours a day, even when you're sleeping. So would ATP be the oxygen, the fuel, um, or the spark plug? Well, it's, 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 the, it's the elements that we put in our body that create the ATP. It's, those are mechanical things that make it happen, that you just discussed. Now, in doing that, this is the fun part. The heart only carries 700 milligrams of ATP in it at one time. So what we're saying is that if your heart rate is 60 beats a minute, there is enough energy in storage to run your body, your heart, for 10 seconds. So now that has to turn over. And you, you've seen it in so many cases where people will just walk across. So again, we apologize for the uh, for the technical glitch there. Um, so if somebody's walking across the room and they're and, and they literally will see them just sit down because they don't have any more energy. Okay. And that's principle to health. And and let me just kind of leapfrog into this thing. The first and most important part of our body is energy. Mm -hmm. Without energy, people don't do anything. That's true. Without oxygen, they don't do anything. That's true. Now then, once we've got that, we're going to have waste, and we have got to get rid of the waste in our body. Okay. And let's let's save the waste discussion okay. for another another slide, because today we want to cover, and we've got about uh, five more minutes okay. to talk about the energy, and and any ATP is the energy. We're going to get into the um, uh, the fuel and the, the oxygen and those other things. But ATP, let's try to help everyone understand what adenosine triphosphate is, okay. why we need it, and why there's a deficiency of it in today's um, uh, unhealthy individuals. Okay. To, to make ATP, you have to have certain organic nutrients in the body. But probably the most important thing is a, a, a thing called carnitine. It's an element that's a protein, and it's the carrier of the new, the fats to the mitochondrial wall, and then it's transferred ion, uh, enzymatically across a double wall into the uh, mitochondria itself. Without the carnitine, you just are you don't have the delivery system to get the nutrients in. Okay. So that's major in terms of getting energy. So the L-carnitine or carnitine helps take the nutrients through the cell wall into the, the mitochondria or the engine, um, and without without that base uh, nutrient element. element, we don't have good um, transfer from nutrients in our blood into the cell to create the ATP, to create the energy that ATP gives. This, that, that, that would be a fair summation. Okay. Okay. So then once you've got this fire taking place, the important thing, and I want to want to bypass just a little bit of your desires, you've got to have certain elements to put that fire out where you do incredible damage to the cell. Okay. Okay. So there's a combination of nutrients that negate that chemical electrical fire that's created with any combustion engine. That engine is in your cell. So when we're talking about ATP, the elements Hi, Marcus. Hey, gentlemen. How are you? Wonderful. Good, Marcus, how are you? We'll be out of here in about two minutes. Okay, two. Um, we are back, and we are having some technical issues. Um, this is our very first meetup, and, and we're going to take a minute to, 
summarize, um, you know, Dr. Wilson has so much passion and knowledge uh, when it comes to uh, ATP, the creation of energy, the, the way our bodies work, and, and, and really a passion to be healthy, uh, a passion to help others be healthy. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the reasons I wanted to sit down with him is because he and I talk over um, coffee and tea and, and meat all the time, and, and I get all of these nuggets of information, and I'm trying to take notes and, and, and figure out how to put the parts and pieces together because there's so much knowledge that try to share it in a 30-minute a uh, uh, meetup is just a, a huge challenge. So I look forward to next week, um, and, and we we'll, we'll, we'll might have to flux their schedule a little bit, but we're going to uh, meet at least once a week and um, speak to what, uh, what energy is, how it affects the body, and, and really, in God's word, how we can be healthier people. Thank you, Steve. It's going to be a fun time. Awesome. And we'll we'll get this thing fixed and 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 let people have an understanding of the trade to create the right form of energy and what it will do for them long term, rather than trying to short circuit that and use stimulants. It's a wonderful story. The consequences of use, using the correct form of fuel are immeasurable. Awesome. I look forward to to that, Steve, Dr. Wilson. We are signing out and. Uh, next week, we will see you back on Google Hangouts. <clears throat> what? We're still on? Do we keep smiling? We do. We just look at the screen and smile. That's all we do. We can do that. See, it says stop being, and then that little thing next to it says smile. That means it's